Hiragana 6, modified and blended sounds, as well as silent syllables. Before we wrap up with Hiragana, there's one last thing I need to show you here, and that is how to combine syllables, how to blend them. We'll take the syllables in the I vowel line, E, that is E, Ki, Shi, Chi, Ni, He, Mi, and Li. And we'll combine them with the syllables in the Y consonant line, as shown here. Namely, the syllables Ya, Yu, and Yo. So what am I talking about when I say blend the syllables, and what effect does it have on the pronunciation? Let's look at the K line first, and what happens when we combine it with the three syllables from the Y line. Here we have Ki and Ya, pronounced together as a word. Ki, Ya, Ki, Ya, Ki, Ya. Note that, again, with Hiragana, each is a single syllable, therefore this is a two-syllable word. Ki, Ya, Ki, Ya. What happens when we combine these two? Notice that when we stick these two together, blend them together, the Ya sound sort of kicks out the vowel sound from the previous syllable. Therefore, the E sound in key has been taken over by the ya. Pronouncing this then, we have a single syllable now. Not two syllables. This is kya. Kya. So in essence, by combining the two separate syllables, ki and ya, we end up with a single blended syllable. Again, pronounced kya. Kya. Let's take a look at some of the other syllables. And what happens when we blend them together? Ki and yu. Ki and yu. When we blend these two syllables together, we end up with Q. Q. Ki and yo. When we blend these two syllables together, we end up with a single syllable again. Kyo. Kyo. Shi and ya, when we combine these two syllables, we end up with sha, sha. This is normally romanized as S-H-A. Shi and you. Combine these two, we end up with shu, shu. Normally romanized as S-H-U, shu. She and yo. Combine these two syllables, we end up with sho, sho, usually romanized as s h o, sho. Chi and ya. Combine these two, blend these into a single syllable, we end up with cha, cha, normally romanized as c h a, cha. Chi and you combine these syllables, we end up with chu, chu, normally romanized as c h u, chu. Chi and yo combine these two syllables, we end up with cho, cho, normally romanized as c h o, cho. N line, ni and ya, ni and ya, combine these two syllables, we end up with nya, nya. Ni and you, blend these syllables, we end up with new, new. Ni and yo. Blend these two syllables, we end up with nyo, nyo. From the H line, he and ya becomes hya, hya. He and you 
blended together gives us the sound hue hue he and yo when blended together gives us the sound hyo hyo from the m line mi and ya combine these two syllables again the ya sound kicks out the e ends up with mya mya mi and you combine these two syllables we end up with mu mu mi and yo combine these syllables we end up with myo myo and finally from the r line the r sound plus the y sound this is probably one of the more difficult sounds for non-native speakers of japanese to make but let's see what happens when we combine these sounds ri and ya combine these two we end up with ria ria ri and you ri and you gives us ryu ryu ri and yo gives us the sound ryo ryo Also, don't forget that we can add the ten ten and the maru, right? The ten ten, this one here, and the maru to our blended sounds for an additional twelve syllables. So, from the K line again, if we add a ten ten, we end up with the G sound. You may recall, we have three additional syllables we can make here: ya, ya, gyu, gyu, gyo, gyo. We can add a ten ten. To the S sound and make a J sound, you may recall, uh, gives us another three syllables here. We end up with ja, ja, ju, ju, and jo, jo. In the H line, recall that we can add a ten ten and a maru here and yield a B and a P sound. Again, this gives us another three sounds per, so we end up with bia, bia, bu. Bu and bio, bio. As for the p sound, we can end up with pia, pia, pu, pu, pio, pio. And I have one final trick up my sleeve here, and that is the small tsu. What is that used for, and how does that change the pronunciation of words written in hiragana? Well, let's take a look. Consider this word here, pronounced ma, ku, la, ma, ku, la, ma, ku, la, ma, ku, la. Let's see how the pronunciation changes when we insert a small tsu in between the ma and the ku in this word. Oh. Remember that each character in hiragana is a single syllable, so our three syllable word has now become a four syllable word. We have ma, small tsu, ku, and ra. What effect does this have on the pronunciation? Well, when you add a small tsu in between two syllables like this, the effect is to insert a silent syllable. That is to say, we're not going to speak anything here at all. It's still going to have four syllables, four beats to it, but it's going to be silent for the second one. Let me pronounce it for you and see if you can hear and see what this sounds like. Ma, ku, la. 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 Makura is the Japanese word for total darkness. Kawaii. All right, let's try another. 
The word for pig in Japanese, buta, buta, buta. With a small tsuma between those two and a ten ten added to the end. Our two syllable word is now a three syllable word, buddha, buddha, buddha. Let's take a look at one more. Mitsu, mitsu. If we add a small tsu in between here, again, it will go from a two syllable to a three syllable word. And that pronunciation changes thusly. Mitsu, mitsu, mitsu. There is one instance in which a small tsu before an s sound acts, instead of being a silent syllable, more like an elongated syllable. That is to say, when a small tsu precedes a syllable that has an s in it, sa, shi, su, se, or so, we elongate that sound, we hover on that sound for just a second and pronounce it rather longer. Take, for example, these four syllables here. This isn't a word, by the way, but just for practice's sake, let's take a look. Pronounce this as ki, sa, te, n. Ki, sa, te, n. What happens when we insert a small tsu in between ki and sa? Let's pronounce it now. Ki sa teng. Ki sa teng. Ki sa teng. Notice that I'm hovering here, sort of elongating the sound, the s sound, in this third syllable here. Ki sa teng. Ki sa teng. So the second syllable here is not silent. If I if we did it that way, it would sound rather different. Let me pronounce it for you that way. Ki sa teng, ki sa teng. That is not how they pronounce it in Japanese. So hover on this sound for just a second. Ki sa teng, ki sa teng. Let's take a look at one more example. This word also, again, just for practice's sake, pronounce it here. I sho, I sho, I sho, I sho. And what will this word sound like when we insert a small tsu in between i and sho? Again, the net effect is to cause us to hover on the s sound here. So let me pronounce it for you. I sho. Isho, isho, isho. You hear the long sound for the S here? So when a small tsu comes before anything other than an S syllable, that will be a pause, a silent syllable, if you will. However, if it comes before an S syllable, you have to pause for a beat on that sound. So, that's it for hiragana. I have nothing left to show you here. Uh, you've made it to the end of the hiragana trail, as it were. If you've persevered up to this point uh, and made it through here, we just picked up 33 distinct syllables that we can uh, blend together using the small y line hiragana uh, to create the blended sounds. And if we combine these with the syllables we looked at before, that is the voice consonants, including those with the ten ten and the maru, there are 104 total sounds in common use in modern Japanese when writing in hiragana. So congratulations and well done. Your next challenge will be katakana, of course, but knowing hiragana now, it'll be a much easier task for you. They're pronounced identically to the way hiragana are pronounced, and hopefully this won't be much of a stumbling block for you at all. We'll take a look at those in our next lesson. Gambatte.